The casting for the 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies was a careful process. Key actors were chosen for their ability to bring life to the variety show format. Auditions were held to find the right mix of talent, and chemistry tests ensured the actors could work well together. The producers sought performers who could handle both comedy and drama, ensuring a dynamic show. Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly were selected for their dance skills, while Judy Garland and Lena Horne brought strong singing abilities. The casting was crucial in creating a film that celebrated the legacy of Broadway impresario Florence Ziegfeld. Each actor brought their unique strengths to the film, making it a memorable showcase of talent. The 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies is a series of performances that celebrate the spirit of the famous Broadway productions of the same name. The directors, Vincent Minnelli and others, used a mix of comedy, music, dance, and drama to create a show that feels like a grand stage performance. They worked closely with a large cast of stars, guiding them to bring out the energy and glamour of the original shows. The director's style is seen in the elaborate sets, bright costumes, and the overall feeling of a festive celebration. They drew inspiration from the Broadway legend Florence Ziegfeld Jr. and his extravagant reviews, aiming to capture the same magic for the movie screen. The collaboration between the director's cast and crew was key to making each act stand out and keep the audience entertained from start to finish. Ziegfeld Follies is a 1945 film that brings together a galaxy of stars to perform comedy, music, and dance. This movie is like a variety show with different acts that are funny, surprising, and sometimes even a bit sad. As you watch, you might find yourself laughing one minute and a little teary the next. It's a mix of emotions, all wrapped up in one film. Now, I have a couple of questions for you. While watching Ziegfeld Follies, did any part of the movie bring back a memory you hold dear? Or was there a scene that left a strong impression on you? Something you still think about? We're curious to hear about your experiences with this movie. Your stories and memories are important to us, so please share them in the comments below. We're looking forward to reading about what this movie means to you. The 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies was a grand production that showcased the glamour of American show business. The movie featured a series of elaborate musical numbers, each designed as a standalone set piece. The set design was a major highlight, with large extravagant sets that recreated the feel of a live stage show. Filming took place in various locations, including sound stages that were specially constructed to accommodate the film's large dance sequences and elaborate set pieces. One of the biggest challenges was coordinating the large number of performers and the complex dance routines. The production team had to ensure that every aspect of the set was perfect for each take, which required precise timing and coordination. The film also employed innovative techniques for its time, such as complex camera movements to capture the dynamic performances. This required the development of new camera rigs and dolly tracks to allow for smooth movement around the sets. The use of Technicolor was another innovative aspect of the production. It was one of the first films to use the three-strip Technicolor process, which allowed for a richer and more vibrant color palette. This technology was crucial in bringing the extravagant costumes and sets to life, making the film a visual feast for the audience. Overall, the production of Ziegfeld Follies was a testament to the creativity and skill of its filmmakers who overcame numerous challenges to create a memorable cinematic experience. Ziegfeld Follies is a 1945 film that showcases a series of musical numbers and comedy sketches. It does not have a traditional plot, but features a variety of performances styled after the famous Broadway producer Florence Ziegfeld's extravagant stage reviews known as the Ziegfeld Follies. The movie acts as a tribute to Ziegfeld, who passed away in 1932, and his style of grand stage productions. The film includes performances by well-known actors and entertainers of the time, such as Fred Astaire, Lucille Ball, and Gene Kelly. The setting is a lavish theater, imagined as if Ziegfeld himself is producing another review from the afterlife. The movie was well received for its visual spectacle and the talent of its cast. It stands out for its elaborate costumes, set designs, and the quality of its musical and dance numbers. Ziegfeld Follies did not win any major awards, but remains a memorable example of mid-20th century American musical cinema. The film Ziegfeld Follies from 1945 features a score and soundtrack that closely align with the movie's story and the feelings it aims to convey. The music sets the mood for each scene, whether it's lively and bright or soft and emotional. 
The composers and musicians crafted tunes that not only fit the era the film portrays, but also enhanced the viewing experience. They worked closely with the filmmakers to ensure that each musical piece would support the visuals and storytelling, creating a harmonious blend of sight and sound. This collaboration resulted in a memorable musical experience that still holds a special place in the history of film music. Awards like the Oscars are not made from solid gold, but are bronze with a gold plating. In the classic film, James Milton's voice was meant to be heard in three pop tune sequences, but these were removed, leaving him only in an operatic number with Marion Bell. Several pieces did not make the final cut, including a musical number by Fred Astaire and a comedy sketch featuring Fanny Bryce. Other notable deletions were performances by Jimmy Durante and a sequence with James Melton that was replaced with an instrumental version for a water ballet. The original finale was altered, with a new performance by Catherine Grayson taking the place of the intended audio by James Melton. These changes resulted in a different final product than initially planned, showcasing the fluid nature of film production where various elements can be reshaped before the final release. The 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies is a series of impressive musical numbers and comedy routines. It does not have a story, but is more like a variety show with different scenes that stand out on their own. The direction by Vincent Minnelli and others showcases a grand scale of production with bright colors and detailed sets. The performances are strong, with Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly dancing together for the first time on screen, creating a memorable moment. The cinematography captures the grandeur of the sets and the energy of the performances, making each scene visually stunning. The audience is treated to a spectacle of dance, music, and humor that reflects the spirit of the famous Broadway shows produced by Florence Ziegfeld. The filmmakers and actors aimed to create a sense of wonder and entertainment, and they succeeded, leaving viewers with a sense of having witnessed something special. In this classic film, viewers are greeted with a nod to the past as the Bring on the Beautiful Girls number showcases women who graced the original stage productions. The film was initially much longer, with a running time of 273 minutes before cuts were made. A wealth of creative ideas were considered, but ultimately not included, such as a musical spoof, a minstrel show, and various sketches featuring a star-studded cast. Notable concepts involved Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, and Fred Astaire, among others. Plans for duets, dance numbers, and an array of sketches promised a rich variety of entertainment. Despite these ambitious plans, many ideas were left on the cutting room floor, leaving audiences to imagine what could have been in this celebration of performance and music. The 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies was a showcase of musical numbers and comedy routines reflecting the entertainment style of the time. It brought joy and a sense of escape to audiences during a period of recovery after World War II. The movie featured big stars and lavish production numbers, which were a draw for movie -agors. It also had a role in shaping fashion trends, with its glamorous costumes influencing styles of the era. The film's variety show format was a precursor to future TV shows, setting a standard for entertainment. Its celebration of American show business also sparked conversations about the value of entertainment in society. Fanny Bryce showed remarkable dedication to her craft, returning to the stage only two months after her son's birth to perform in a Broadway show. In a rare cinematic event, Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire brought their dance talents together on screen, a pairing that only happened twice. Lena Horne, despite her dislike for the setting of a song she performed in the film, later embraced it in her live performances, recording it multiple times with different musical arrangements, including a samba rhythm and a swinging tempo, and featuring it in a Broadway show that won her a Tony Award. The 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies received a mixed response from critics. Some praised its visual spectacle and the performances of its cast, while others found it lacked a coherent story. The audience enjoyed the film's music and dance numbers, making it a popular choice for entertainment at the time. It was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Art Direction, but did not win. The nomination itself was a significant honor, recognizing the hard work of the set designers and contributing to the prestige of everyone involved in the production. The film's success helped to further the careers of its stars and remains a memorable part of their professional history. In a blend of comedy, music, and dance, this film showcases a series of performances by some of the era's most talented artists. 
Sid Sherry's graced the screen alongside Fred Astaire, marking one of their three memorable collaborations. The humor of the time is captured in a sketch about a man who simply wants to pay a fine but faces an overzealous lawyer, leading to a series of escalating penalties. The show revisits past successes with a variety of acts, including a water ballet, operatic performances, comedic routines, and soulful singing, all tied together by the vision of a showman reflecting on his illustrious career. The film features a mix of solo and collaborative performances, with notable pairings like Astaire and Gene Kelly and solo spots for stars like Judy Garland and Lena Horne. The production culminates in a celebration of beauty, showcasing the talents of Catherine Grayson in a spectacle of visual and musical delight. During the making of Ziegfeld Follies, the cast and crew faced unique challenges and shared memorable moments. The film brought together a host of stars, each with their own set of skills and personalities. Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly danced together for the first time on screen, creating a historic cinematic moment. The elaborate sets were a sight to behold, with one scene featuring a waterfall that was actually made of glittering sequins. Judy Garland, known for her singing, took on a comedic role, surprising many with her versatility. The production was a massive undertaking, with costumes alone costing over a million dollars, a hefty sum at the time. Despite the pressure, the team worked tirelessly to create a show that was true to the grand style of the original Broadway productions of Florence Ziegfeld. The spirit of collaboration was strong, and many formed lasting friendships. The film stands as a tribute to the golden age of Hollywood musicals, showcasing the talent and dedication of all involved. Keenan Wynn and Van Johnson shared the screen in a series of films, showcasing their dynamic as actors through various roles. Their collaboration included titles like Between Two Women and Weekend at the Waldorf, with their joint appearance in the film in question marking one of their many on-screen partnerships. The film's broadcast history began in Los Angeles in 1957, reaching various cities across the United States over the following two years. Despite the advent of color TV, these initial broadcasts were in black and white, with the original Technicolor version becoming available to viewers only much later. Red Skelton brought his guzzler's gin routine from his MGM screentist to life in the film, adding a touch of his comedic talent to the ensemble. The 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies is a significant work in the history of cinema. It brought together a host of stars and showcased a variety of performances, setting a standard for future musicals and variety shows in film. Its style influenced many later movies that combined music, dance, and sketches. The film also inspired a trend of big-budget productions with multiple star appearances, a format that has been repeated in numerous films and live shows since its release. Ziegfeld Folly stands as a notable example of Hollywood's golden age of musicals remembered for its grandeur and the way it celebrated the magic of show business. In a dramatic turn during the final scene's production, a bubble machine malfunction led to chaos on set. The gas from the bubbles caused the cameraman to lose consciousness high above the ground. The director, Vincent Minnelli, had to act quickly to prevent a fall. The set was overwhelmed with bubbles, making it impossible to shut the machine off until the fire department intervened. The aftermath saw workers managing the bubbles with rackets, and the cast and crew needed fresh air between takes. James Melton resorted to singing with a damp cloth in his mouth, and a dance sequence featuring Fred Astaire, and Lucille Bremer was cut because their faces were obscured by bubbles. Fanny Bryce, a notable performer, returned to the stage just two months after her daughter's birth showing her dedication to the Broadway show Ziegfeld Midnight Frolic. The film's initial release was carefully tested in theaters, starting with a two-week run at the Colonial Theater in Boston. Despite high ticket sales, the audience's lukewarm response led to a delayed nationwide release. The producers considered various changes to improve the film's reception, including altering the sequence of segments and introducing a new finale, but these were not implemented. The film finally premiered in Manhattan at the Capitol Theater and was released widely shortly after. Fanny Bryce brought her stage and radio humor to the screen one last time. Her famous The Sweepstakes Ticket sketch, which was part of her final Broadway show, made its way into the film. This show had a successful run at the Winter Garden Theater. Another comedy act, Baby Snooks, and The Burglar, also filmed but later lost, was once a hit on NBC Radio. In the film, Bryce reprised her role as Snooks alongside Hanley Stafford, who played her father and B.S., bully as the burglar. 
Catherine Grayson stepped in for James Melton for the film's closing song, yet Victor Records released a recording of Melton's rendition of There's Beauty Everywhere earlier that year. The music was composed by Harry Warren with lyrics by Arthur Freed. The Babbitt and the Bromide, a humorous song by George and Ara Gershwin, featured Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly performing a routine originally danced by Astaire and his sister Adele on Broadway. This number added a touch of classic Broadway to the film's very performances. If you have seen the 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies, we would love to hear how it touched your life or changed the way you see movies. Your stories and memories are valuable and sharing them can bring joy to others. They also help keep the history and love for classic films alive. If you enjoy these trips down memory lane, please show your support with a like, share, or subscribe for more content like this. Your interaction helps us create more content that you love. Share your story in the comments and join our community of cinema fans.